here we are. So welcome. I just want to say congratulations to Kelly this morning because we just launched the book 21 today on the 21st. Perfect. In the snowy, snowy April Pittsburgh. <laughs> it, it's a crazy spring in Pittsburgh. We had 80 yeah. a couple weeks ago and now it's snowing and yeah. 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 So um, welcome to everybody who's watching. Um, I'm Corey Walmsley. I'm the CEO of Aurora Corialis Publishing, and we are welcoming author Kelly Commander today. And I'm going to let her introduce herself in just a moment. First, I wanted to say that if you are watching us, um, whether you're live or on the replay, make sure you drop your questions in the comments. Um, let us know what you're thinking, because this is your chance to pick Kelly's brain, to pick my brain, and find out more about how you can become an author, what the writing process is like, all that fabulous stuff. And you get in to win some fabulous author prizes. Mm -hmm. Everybody who comments or asks questions gets a prize and um, everybody gets their name in a hat for one grand prize, which I'm gonna be drawing for next week. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kelly. Kelly, tell us who you are, what you do and tell us all about 21. Oh boy. Well, my name is Kelly Commander, and I am the president and CEO of K2 Creative, content branding and marketing solutions for small businesses and nonprofits. And um, 21 is 20 W-O-N, and you can see the book back here behind me, is just a compilation of, not just, it's a compilation of 21 really powerful, strong female entrepreneurs who rocked it last year during the global crisis and we're willing to open up and tell us their stories of both personal and business perseverance and how they pivoted and how they grew their businesses and started their businesses and just truly just kicked butt last year. That is so awesome. And it's so exciting to be a part of this. I actually got to share my story in this too. Yes. Um, so I wanted to talk about your inspiration for the book because I remember when we first started talking about this, you had such a unique perspective and I knew that this was something really powerful we had to get out. So go ahead. Yeah, um, it was the night before Thanksgiving last year, 2020, and we had canceled plans probably a week or two before that to go to South Carolina to visit our great nieces and our great nephew who actually turns one today. So it's all like this whole numbers thing and like the stars were aligned. Um, and we've yet to meet him yet because of the pandemic. And we canceled those plans. I was not having family at my house for Thanksgiving dinner. I knew that Christmas Eve was gonna be a bust and I was just really down on everything. And then it hit me that there were so many good things that happened in 2020. I started my own business. I knew a few other people that started businesses. I knew women who were expanding the businesses they had owned for many years. I was involved in a nonprofit that was getting um, uh, national recognition that was going national instead of just a nonprofit here in the city of Pittsburgh. And I thought, you know what, if I can get 20 other people to write a chapter, that would be a book. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have to put the book out completely myself. And as you know, as my coach and editor, I wrote the introduction, I wrote my chapter and I wrote the closing and everybody else wrote the rest and we put it together beautifully and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I do want to say it's very unusual to have that many authors. Um, a lot of the, uh, the anthologies that we work on um, or, you know, anthologies that I've just seen out and about are, you know, closer to like a dozen authors. So to have that many authors that you reached out to and they all said yes and they were very excited about this. Um, you know, that, that speaks to the power of the project, first of all. And second, um, <laughs> I did want to say when you were like, I want 21 authors in here, I was like, <laughs> that's a lot. Trust me, I, yeah, I could see kind of like a wash over on your face. The first call that we had back in November, just said December, I think it was early December. Um, yeah, you kind of went a little pale and <laughs> I thought we could do this and we did. Yeah. And everyone was so agreeable and everybody stuck to the deadlines that we gave them and the outline that we gave them to, you know, just make their chapter flow. Um, a lot of the women have said, like, I want to write my own book now, you know, because of this project. And that's, that to me, helping other people and helping the people who were in this book. That's what it's all about. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it makes a difference too when you're talking to people about the book. They have to be people who are, you know, they they have that desire to get the book out. Um, they want to tell their story. It can't be somebody that is just going to sit on it and like, oh, maybe I'll get it back to you. They need to share that drive too. Right, right. And it was proven that everybody did have that because um, you're well aware there was a few chapters I had to send back and mm -hmm. say, give us more. You know, yeah. you're just you're just scratching the surface. I know what you did last year. You know, I know you outside of you writing this chapter, you need to dig deeper and give us more. And, you know, I had pushback a little bit from one person. And I think once she finished it, she was relieved and she was glad that she did open up and give more. Yeah, um, I, I think that is really important that we do, um, you know, when we're working on a book like that, that you keep that vision in mind and hold everybody to that standard. And I love that everybody met us there. Um, they were all right there with us. So, you know, kudos to all the authors. I know, um, I see Renee is watching. So hi, Renee. Renee is one of the authors in 21. Um, and Allison's watching. Allison's one of my editors. Um, Jim was actually the editor on this book, mm -hmm. but uh, he's not on right now. So um, Renee says, two remarkable women. Thank you, Renee. Oh, thank you. And, and as many people have seen, um, Renee had a big part in this book as well. Not only did I ask her to write the foreword, mm -hmm. um, she was also somebody who was very instrumental in me pushing myself to, to start and complete the project. So mm -hmm. it was just, it, it was all 21 of us, plus the people who gave us advanced praise, the people who read the book early to be able to write us Amazon reviews. Mm -hmm. You know, when they say it takes a village, it, it actually takes a village to get a book published too. It's crazy. Yeah, and I think a lot of people feel like, you know, authors just kind of hole up in a dungeon somewhere, which is totally a dream, but, you know, they, they just hide somewhere and they make a book and it just floats out into the atmosphere and then it's magically, you know, sold. It doesn't happen that way. It really does take a team or a village or, you know, whatever you want to call it. It yes. takes a lot of people to make that happen. And it's that, you know, it's not just a wish, it's that inspired action. Um, it, we had some yeah. very strategic things that we did to make sure that we could get the book out, that we could be successful with it and, you know, get it in front of a lot of people. Um, right. Can you talk about some of the, uh, some of the different mm -hmm. things that you did on your end? Absolutely. Um, the first thing I did was I contacted you. <laughs> that was the first <laughs> thing that I did because I had no idea what the process was and how, how you, how the book magically ended up on Amazon and ended up in somebody's hands. You know, I didn't know any of that. Um, so the first step was contacting somebody who knows what they're doing because I contacted you early December and it's mm -hmm. April 21st. And the book is literally out there. I was able to get a copy, you know, mailed to my house over the weekend. And I just can't believe how quick it happened. Um, so that was very important was finding people who know what they're doing and, and can guide you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another thing that I think is really important is to have a plan. Like I had a specific notebook that was just for the 21 project. Mm -hmm. Every coaching session that you and I had, every time I talked to one of the authors as a one-off, whether they text me or called me or emailed me and there was something important, I kept notes on it. And I think I did a pretty good job of remembering everything. I don't know. I guess, <laughs> I guess if I didn't, I'd know by now. You know, but I think the staying organized was super important too, especially if you're doing something like an anthology, because, you know, I had a spreadsheet who sent me their headshot, who sent me their bio, who sent me the chapter. Did I send it back? Is it edited? You know, there was a lot of behind the scenes legwork that needs done. And I don't think it'll be very different for me when I write my next book, which will be just me. I'll mm -hmm. still have to have a process, still have to have lists, still need your guidance, you know, it, 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 but this this went much smoother than I, I ever anticipated. I really wasn't sure what to expect. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that it went smoother than you anticipated because I do know that, um, you know, people who haven't seen the behind the scenes, there is that like, okay, well, how does this happen? And what, what do I have to do for this? And all that kind of stuff. And I completely agree with you on the organization. Um, I know both of us are very highly organized people. Yeah. We're very much like, all right, here's the timeline for the project here, 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 here. These are the mile markers um, or the milestones. So we knew like what needed to happen by a certain date, when we needed to have, you know, everybody's headshots in, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So 
right? Yes, organization is absolutely paramount. Yes, and, and leadership, having somebody to lead you and, you know, say, you know, Kelly, this is the true deadline, so you need to pad this a little bit in case somebody falls behind. And, mm -hmm. you know, just having that common sense to say, you know, not everybody's as quick at things and, and think about who, who's in the book. We have 21 women who own at least one business, if not two. Some of them work a full-time job in addition to running their small business. Mm -hmm. Many of you, including you, have young children who have been homeschooled for a year now. So, you know, they're, they're making sure their kids are connected to Wi-Fi and doing their homework while they're trying to run their business and turn in a chapter. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a big juggling act for a lot of people. Yeah, I know it was. Um, I'm, I just looked out the window and saw my kids throwing snowballs. <laughs> April 21st, Pittsburgh. I'm using my um, Merry Christmas mug because I saw snow this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was just like, what is going on? Oh, they're throwing snowballs. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's a juggling act for sure. And like, I'm sitting in my office and I'm watching them outside. And I mean, that's that's honestly how a lot of us were doing things. Like, you know, we had to know when we would have the downtime. Um, I actually think I did mine over like the Christmas break thing that we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Just to make sure I had the downtime where I wasn't devoting my time to you know, making sure my kids were doing their homework. I was focusing on, you know, this is my time to write. Right, homework. right. And I remember you messaging me that Matt had taken the kids to go pick up dinner and you had started pounding out the chapter then because the house was quiet and you were home by yourself. And when does that happen during a pandemic? Everybody's yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was a big challenge for people last year. And I know there were some people who had talked to me before who said, like, I'd like to write a book, but I've got X, Y, Z going on now because of the pandemic. So yeah. I think it really speaks to, um, you know, the drive and the determination of everybody in that book to say, yeah, they, everybody got their stuff in on time. We didn't have to yell at anybody. <laughs> no. And we gave them six weeks to yeah. turn in the chapter from start to finish. So once we had those initial meetings yeah. and went over everything, we told people flat out, you have six weeks to get this first, you know, draft to us. Mm -hmm. um, and they all did it. They did. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's so exciting that this, this came to fruition and so quickly. Um, yeah. So I did want to say we've got some people watching now um, just to, <laughs> to jump in again. If you have questions for Kelly, drop them in the comments, or if you want to say hi or whatever, um, everybody who's asking us questions, interacting, you're going to get your name in for a big author prize coming next week. So make sure you do that. Um, pick our brains. We're here for you. Um, so let me see. What else do we want to talk about today? Oh, show off the book. Oh, yeah. Show off the book. Yeah. I don't want to knock my beautiful flowers over. And I do have to say, right before we got on camera, of course, somebody's knocking at the door, the dog's going ballistic, the whole nine <laughs> yards. And I said, Oh, I said, it's it's Brightingers. I said, it's our local flower delivery. And Corey said, go down and get it. So I did. And these gorgeous flowers were sent to me by Marilee Smith, who was one of the contributing authors in the book and somebody who I met right before the pandemic um, hit, and we have become really good friends since then, um, which is another really big benefit of doing this, is that I have made so many new friends, and I have so many new connections, and I just get the warm fuzzies. But here it is. Here's the book. And the cover. Oh, my God. <laughs> the cover. We, we had so many discussions about the cover, and... Um, yeah. Do you want to tell the story about how this came to be? Because it, it was just like, it, this was actual magic. Um, it was. <laughs> it was. Um, Karen Kapline is the cover designer from Better Be Creative. Um, and, you know, she, we had a, she sat in on both of the calls that we did with the authors. We had two separate Zoom calls to accommodate everybody. And everybody's got to meet each other, talk about what their chapter was going to be about if they knew talked about their businesses, whatever. And Karen sat in real quiet on both, took notes, took notes. After the second one, she reached out to me and said, you know, do you happen to have any space left for the book? And I said, I actually have one spot available. You would make 21. And she said, I'll do it. So that made me feel even better because I knew she'd do a great job on the cover, but being that she was also going to be represented in the book and part of it, I knew that she would really take it over the top. So we went back and forth. There were pictures of women. There were women wearing capes. There were, gosh, I can't even remember because this was such a long process. And I believe, now you're gonna have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe 
you had texted me chess pieces mm -hmm. and we got into our email and Karen had sent a picture similar or maybe this exact picture close to it of chess pieces. Yeah. That is what happened, right? Yeah, it was like we texted and then not long after Karen was like, what do you think of this? Yeah, and just the way that she had the thought to do the word one and then the chess piece that turns into the queen and then the 21 all in the same color. And, you know, we knew we wanted something with purple because just talking to a lot of the other authors and looking up color schemes and, you know, seeing the meanings behind colors, um, everybody I talked to was like, oh my gosh, purple, 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 you know, it's, it's royalty, it's power, it's this, it's that. And I thought, you know what, let's go with something that doesn't really typically go with purple. Let's go with a goldish yellow color. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's beautiful. The compliments that I have gotten on this cover are just amazing. Um, yeah, she killed it. She knocked it out of the park. It's beautiful. But yeah, it was, it was like, beautiful. stars <laughs> aligning with the two of you with the whole chess piece thing. That was never even a thought in my mind. No, no. I think what happened that morning was I was looking for pictures of cupcakes. And somehow, um, cause I had, I was searching like party, celebrate, and I was looking at pictures of cupcakes because I was thinking about celebration winning. And then I searched win to see if it would give me some different things. And that's when the chess piece picture with the crown on it came up. And I was like, yes, Ooh, okay. And I liked the cupcake. You sent a really cool cupcake photo too that I really liked. And then we talked about, you know, a cityscape and skyline of a city. And then we were like, no, because none of us are really working out of an office. Everybody's working from home. Yeah. Even those of us, who had a full-time job in addition to running their own business were still working out of their houses. We were like, the city thing's not going to work. Um, my original thought was um, a convertible mm -hmm. driving away with like a woman's arm out the window. And I don't know. And Karen, she played with it for the longest time. And she was like, no, that's not it. And I'm thinking, how do you know that's not it? <laughs> she knows. She <laughs> because knows. She knows that wasn't it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I you know, it, it's really interesting the behind the scenes on these covers because it is a process. It's not just, oh, I like this picture. Let's use that. It's, you know, what is going to represent the story? What is going to really represent everyone? And for 21 authors to have something that really speaks to all of us, that's just amazing. It is because we couldn't put what looked like a, a woman on the cover because there's 21 of us and we're all yeah. so different mm -hmm. from you know our hair to our skin color to our height our weight like there was yeah. no one woman that could represent all of us mm -hmm. and yeah she just it, it's amazing it's just beautiful yeah. i've just been looking at it since saturday i just walked past <laughs> it we took it we went to my mom's we had dropped something off at my mom's on saturday my daughter and i and i was talking to the book i said no this is the first time you're going to grandma's <laughs> silly too you know <laughs> you do you do you gotta have fun with it um so we don't have any questions yet but if you're watching on the replay and you want to have ask a question go ahead um but i did want to wrap this up because i know you're busy we're launching today um if you are watching this today april 21st 2021 make sure you go to amazon and grab a copy of the book it is free today a digital copy yes. um we're gonna drop the link in the comments so you can just click and download and it's all yep. yours and if you have read it or if you you know because i know you're going to read it the second you get it hop back on amazon and give us a review that that helps everybody because then people can see what you liked and know that they want to grab it too um Absolutely. so i want to wrap up by asking you kelly um if somebody is thinking about a book um no matter how crazy the idea what would you tell them to start out i would tell them to make sure that whatever they're planning on writing about people are going to want to read you know there's a million books about certain topics out there. So unless you have some kind of a spin to it or some kind of a special, some kind of a special topic under that topic that people are going to say, oh, wow, this is something I haven't ever seen before or, you know, something I'm going to learn from. I think that's super important. Um, and I just say, just, just get your thoughts together and just do it. I mean, there's no... I don't regret one second I spent on this project. And I know that none of the women involved in this do either. Um, our spouses might feel differently, but um, <laughs> you know, 
but you just, you have to start somewhere. And this was my baby step, even though the project was huge, my part of it wasn't the entire book. So this was my baby step to me writing my own book. And I, you know, I'm going back and forth. I have a notebook and I have fiction. I have nonfiction. I have titles. I have subjects, you know, write things down and let it marinate. Don't make a rash decision. Think about what you want to do. And then most definitely contact somebody like you who knows what to do, because you can't do this on your own. You really can't. Yeah, it really does take a team. It does. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Kelly. This is wonderful. I'm glad we got to celebrate our special day. Yes. <laughs> I'll see you this evening on the author's happy hour. Yes. Yes. That's something else you got to do if you're doing an anthology. Author's happy hour to celebrate your book. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and get that story out there. All right. 